the meeting to order at six o'clock. First on the agenda, are there any changes or additions, Dan? Yes, if we could add um, new mem appoint new member to the uh, EMS volunteer roster. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Next, approve the minutes. The minutes of June 17th, 2019. Make a motion to approve them. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Second. Yes, I was wondering about, um, I don't know what page it is, number 12 under mm -hmm. section 7. Did we have to have a second for that motion? For any motion has to have a second. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. I missed the second. Yeah. Okay. Good catch. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So fast. <clears throat> Next, the minutes of June 19th, 2019. A motion to approve those. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, oh, we have a special award ceremony tonight for one of our EMS volunteers or paid person. Go ahead, sir. Excellent. Thank you very much up. for making time for us today. Uh, my name is Dan Batesy, and I'm from the Department of Health. Uh, and this is a, a very special opportunity for us. We give out what's called our life saving award uh, for special occasions, for special circumstances where a member of our EMS community goes above and beyond uh, and uh, exhibits extraordinary uh, actions uh, in, the, in the process of saving life. So this is what I'm here tonight to talk about. Uh, I'll be brief, but uh, rather than trying to put them in my own words, I thought I would just read you the nomination uh, because I think Bill Mace, the, the author of the nomination, put it uh, far more eloquently than I could ever speak. Uh, on May 23rd, there was a crash on Route 108 in approximately 1840 hours. A uh, vehicle hit a concrete building and two passing motorists had stopped, including off-duty Morristown EMS Assistant Chief Corey Bobert. There was poor 911 cell coverage and Corey was unable to raise the Loyal Dispatch on the radio. The single occupant in the car was unresponsive. He was bleeding from the mouth, nose and ears and appeared pinned under the passenger side dashboard. As Corey began her assessment of the victim, there was a whoosh as the vehicle caught fire and flames rolled over the crushed hood and windshield. In that moment, Corey could have stayed or backed away. She stayed. Without the protection of any turnout gear and at great personal risk, she grabbed the victim under the arms, directed a couple of bystanders to assist, and as things got hotter, they managed to remove him from the car. He was moved to a place of safety, and Corey set about keeping this airway clear with positioning and sweeps uh, while waiting EMS and fire to arrive. On arrival of Northern EMS, she assisted the crew with further assessment, IV placement, and the patient was transported to Copley Hospital for stabilization prior to transfer to UVM and its trauma center. This event is remarkable and notable for several reasons besides the obvious. This happened during National EMS Week, and this year's promotion was EMS Strong Beyond the Call. Corey is five foot nothing tall and recovering from a surgical knee repair. Her determination, leadership, and courage reflects honorably on herself, their agency, town, and Vermont public safety community. So on behalf then of all of those stakeholders, including the Vermont Department of Health and Vermont EMS, we would like to award Corey with a life-saving award. Do I hear a speech, Corey? <laughs> I just am humble, and it's it's nice to get the award, but it, like I've said so many times, it's just another day. I mean, everybody else there are the ones that go through go through the thought process of the what ifs, and we just do it. So to me, it's it's the opposite. 
it's not me that should get the attention. Well, thank you so much, Alex. Well, I'm very thankful. That's great. Well, we're certainly all very proud of you. Thank you. And uh, we appreciate that award. That's fantastic. Thank you. And thank you, Corey. And thanks, Bill. Honored to have you working at our town. Thank you. Yes. And I would add to the fact that uh, you may be writing off the courage that you showed that day, but I'm not. A lot of folks in the EMS world, uh, police, fire, and EMS, are faced with dangers every day, and they have to make that split-second decision. And it comes down to the person that you are, whether you stay or go, or you assess the situation, sometimes the decision is that you have to go. This one you made and brought that gentleman to safety, and that took great courage. So don't downplay that. I appreciate your humbleness. But that it was, was um, in, a, in the 20 year career, it was probably the hardest decision I've made to, to stay or back away. Many did, many backed away for good reasons. And it's, it's, um, like a reality check that thought of the commitment that you've given to this career knowing that I have three kids and you know a, a career still to go to but yet I chose to stay there and that's what I replay I don't replay anything else except that actual decision that I made and the fact that you were there at that moment in time we could debate why that happened yeah, yeah. But, uh, definitely you were there for a reason yeah. and I appreciate yes, it I think of that five minutes earlier five minutes later mm -hmm. Well, thank you again. Thank you. thank you very much. And Bill, thank you for, for making this all happen, too. Much appreciated. Thank you. Okay. Thanks again. All right, we'll move to community concerns. Do we have any community concerns tonight? Next, liquor control. Do we have liquor control? No. no. New business. Noise house, dog park, and parking discussion. Do you want to, Sarah, do you want to talk about this? The dog park? Yeah. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear back here. Yes. No, 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 she, she has the ballpark. Repeat yes. what we're talking dog about. Dog park and parking discussion. <laughs> sorry, Mary. I try to speak loud. I remember it well. <laughs> Some of you should. <clears throat> I find the location of a dog park behind the Historical Society to be inappropriate. The Noise House is an historical icon, and the dog park behind it does not fit the image. If you want to reflect the time period of 1820, try a cow or a horse or a couple of sheep out back there, but not a dog park. The open space around the noise house is already limited, and blocking off more will only detract from its surroundings. As you enter and leave the village, the noise house at one end of Main Street and PA at the other end forms sort of a boundary of the village and two landmarks that have architectural importance, certainly to the town. And the leaves, and I'm looking up and down that way, leaves a favorable image of the village. I also wonder about the parking. Parking, as I understand it, on the lower end of Main Street seems to be a concern of many, and adding a dog park would only bring more cars. I've heard that they might think of paving some of the Historical Society grounds, which would further conflict with the whole 19th century image of the Historical Society. The noise house is of value and should not be detracted from uh, by anything. I wonder on the need for a dog park. I've had dogs, three of them, since I've lived in Morrisville, and at both my current house on West High Street and my house on Maple Street. I never found any trouble in walking them on our very well-maintained, year-round streets and sidewalks. And then, 
It's easy to say no to something, but sometimes you should provide alternatives. So I have gone around town and looked at some possible alternatives. One possible location would be the Oxbow. I noticed that there are three setups, or setups for three uh, soccer fields currently down there. I was up at the high school, and there are setups for four more up there. I doubt that four, seven soccer fields would be in use at any one time. I also went down on A Street, and you know where the two old buildings are that were mills or whatever down there. And it's a cutoff to the right with a path that leads through to Tomlinson's. There was water down there the day I was there. But certainly with some fill and clearing out the brush, the underbrush uh, in that area, that could be used as a dog park. And, it would, and there is parking in the area. The land surrounding the school, and if concerned with noise, you could just say it's close to the dogs uh, during school hours. And there's an area in front of the observatory on the hill beyond the walking path that, as far as I could see, was being used for nothing. In fact, the grass had grown up to be about this high. The area beyond the fence to the right of the middle school and before the soccer fields uh, is also an area where there might be some marked off for uh, a dog park, if a dog park is really essential. Uh, to in the village. But mainly, I think my concern is the ambiance of the noise house. A dog park does not fit in uh, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Go ahead, ma'am. Well, I live right next door to the museum. And I'll tell you, when I got this letter, I thought the last thing I want is dogs barking and running around out back, or that is my peace and quiet. Now, I wondered, I've always had a dog, until recently, but what I wanted to know was, did they search any other place, or how did they come up with this, and how many, how many people are investing in this? Did they look at any other place to have a dog park? Do you want to talk about it, Sarah? So, so yeah, Trish, Trish, and, or Trish and I um, and Malia have been working on it, and they don't know who to address. Um, <laughs> Just the <but>, room. <laughs> um, so we um, first started looking at the spot that was near um, the playground in the Y, where the bike yes. shed is across from the library. The select board had some concerns about that. Um, but that was originally where we were thinking of an area. When um, I was here for the skate park committee meeting, well, the select board meeting that there were so many people for the skate park, um, and they were talking about um, the skate park as an oxbow and that use of parking lot and looking for a different location, it occurred to me at that time that the skate park probably would make more sense to be at the park in an open location right next to the regular park. So it was all that similar recreation activities. And the dog park is simply a fence and that that would be better in a tucked in um, town area that was not in the middle of downtown because all you needed was a grassy area for fence with trees. And so I asked at a staff meeting where was town property that um, was available within the village because the dog park would be primarily for people that lived in the village that could walk their dog to a fenced in area. There is the Oxbow, but um, not all dog owners want to have their dogs running around. And actually, I believe we have an ordinance where you're not really supposed to be having your dogs running without a leash in town. So we're looking for a place in town um, to, pr to provide a fenced-in area for people to walk. So well, couldn't you fence in an area down like the Oxbow or all around the media school? I don't think, if we don't, if I'm looking, we are looking for an area that the town owns, so I don't believe it could be on school property. Does the school own that, the loop 
in the woods, and then it comes out in that semi mode. Is that school property? The school has quite a bit of acreage that goes back there. <laughs> they do, but we, we don't have control over that property. Yeah. So perhaps Malia might ask that. I mean, that's a fantastic idea. I'm from Barrie, and the dog park in Barrie is in a similar location to. If you think about the school, there's the track, there's the upper soccer field, and then across the little stream, there's that kind of more wild field that goes into the trails. And some sort of dog park there, because I see dog owners all the time on that. In Barrie, the dog park is right off the bicycle path in Barrie. Um, to get to it, you park at the Barrie City Elementary School, and you walk down a bit with your dog on a leash, and then there's a Sarah Imagines a fenced in area that's pretty much exactly the size of what you were kind of talking about with the noise house. And it's um, it's a good location because there are walkers anywhere, there are recreators anyway there. And so to hear Mary say that, I think, oh, that would look a lot like a Barry Dog Park. And that would be a logical place for it because there are already people recreating outdoors at the school and already dog owners, as I said, using that wooded trail. I know we're certainly, as a board, I think we're all kind of open to some ideas. Um, <clears throat> I know Sarah and, and her daughter Malia are really looking for the spot, you know, and looking to town property is, is uh, you know, the easiest avenue because we have control of that. Like, the school property is, is not a bad idea, but it may be a, much more of a hurdle to try to get permission to have one there because I know it's a, it's in town, but we're not, we have no control over the school property. So um, that would add something else. Go ahead, Andrea. I'd like to add that the Oxbow seems to be like a perfect place to have it, but after having a daughter who played soccer there for many years, she hated it because there was always dog poop. And she hated playing on a soccer field that had that. Why they always had to play soccer there when we had plenty of fields up at the school, I've never understood. But that's just one thing about the Oxbow that I've, all, I've never liked when people go down there with the dogs and let them go because mm -hmm. next thing she's out of the field and she's trying to Dodge a poop. Right. <laughs> well, I think so, wherever it would be, it would have to be fenced in, right? So it would have to be like a section down at the Oxbow. So it's something like that. Right. But you can't mix free running and fenced in area. Right. Okay? And everyone in this community takes their dogs that have a dog that they can off leash. I mean, and take it to the Oxbow Park. And so, and I'm me thinking about this, and this was something we talked about from the get go on this one. There's just no possible way you can put a fence up and have the other guy come and let his dog run and you have some dogs playing in a fenced area. You cannot have them together in one park. I mean, it just, it, it, it won't happen. It can't happen. Because you're going to get this dog over here that wants it, that dog over there and there's a fence in between them. I mean, it, it just... I'm not following what you're saying. <laughs> if the fenced in area is for letting dogs run freely off leash, then the rest of the park would be for leashed dogs only, I would think. Is that the thought process? Yes. Yeah, but you, who is going to enforce that? This whole community knows, like, if you have a dog, you let it just be, you go down to Axwell Park, if you can trust your dog, to let it just run free. Mm -hmm. So are we talking to put in a fenced-in area? And you have to remember, we can't put it on the low side of that park because of the flood plain. Mm -hmm. So I... I don't know personally. I mean, I love Octo Park, but I don't think that Octo Park is the place to put a fence in dog park. I don't. I don't see it as the mix of what is already there. Uh, I don't see that we have room on our upper fields that it would be out of our floodplain. It has to be on the upside. I mean, it can't be. I mean, we all see it every single year. The flooding on the bottom side. I don't think there's any way to enforce. No matter where we put it, I don't think there's any way to enforce. No, no, no. Uh, I agree. People, with you. people are but off I, leash. It, it should be in a place that it's separate from where from people presently let their dogs run free. I, so, I mean, that begs the question: If we're going to have a fenced-in dogs off leash area in town, are we now going to enforce leash law at the Oxbow Park? Because I don't see us. I don't see anybody, whether it's, uh, donations or any otherwise. Putting the money into a fenced-in area, if nobody's going to use it, they just go down to the Oxbow Park and let the dogs run anyway. That's, that's the Sarah, one. talk on that note about you guys and Izzy. And I heard two other people talk at one of our meetings about how they take their dogs to the Waterbury Dog Park. Yeah, we, so we, don't, we moved out of the village um, about two years ago. But when we were in the village, because we couldn't let her free, we just had a little village lot. 
we wouldn't let her run around at the so we would drop into the Waterbury dog park to let her run her in a fenced in area with dogs that, you know, and I have copies of their rules, I have a few. Um, that there were, you know, there's rules the, for the dogs that can go. They have to be up in shots and they have to be managed and so we would a often, age, yeah, right? you have to be, you can't be a puppy and so that's where we would take her. You know, now we now we've moved out of the village, so we have a yard she can run in. But. Well, and the fact is, we're not, they're not supposed to be running here for free either. They're supposed to be always on leash. Isn't that correct? Okay. I, and we, I, I think that's the way it should be. I thought we waved the, the ox bell. I, I don't think we. It's in the, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, the ordinance that it's waved. It is, is waved. It shouldn't be. Yeah. To me, I mean, that and the school both, I don't think animals, dogs, should be running loose. Right. Um, games and things up there, kids running around. I don't think, and, right. but they, we, we haven't enforced it, and I don't know if... Maybe we have an issue, but I, I think you're right. I think we should. Right. Well, if it's waived, then we wouldn't be enforcing it. I didn't realize it was waived at the hospital. Jill, you had a comment. Uh, I was just going to say, I'm here as the chair of the board of the Morristown Historical Society, so we run the Noise House, and we have our own separate list of concerns that we email um, to the select board that include, you know, noise, odor, damage to the lawn, the impact of the museum visitorship um, given to dogs, not exactly the same populations, uh, all sorts, a host of issues. But I feel like with this proposal at the back of the Noise House lawn, I feel like the most um, respected voice really should be the neighbor who lives in the White House because it really will completely alter her sense of her surroundings. Not only that, it's going to affect the value of my house if I ever want to sell it. Who wants to buy a house next to a dog park when they're out? First of all, I didn't understand what hours they plan to do this, or who's going to pick up after the dogs, or are they going to hire someone to be out here watching this? Or they don't. I watch them come down the street. There's a man that comes down every three times a day with two dogs. I've n never, ever seen him pick up anything. <laughs> and the lady, too, there's a lady that has two little teeny dogs that comes down at least twice a day, but I've never seen her pick up anything either. I hear that a lot in the village. I always pick up after my dog. People have told me in the village, like, we watch and you're one of the few people, which is too bad. No, but it is. But it does seem to be a problem. Um, uh, from the museum point of view, our concerns, um, as I said, include noise, traffic, where there's already another part of the conversation tonight is about the need for more parking down there to accommodate the, the restaurants and whatnot. And people visiting a dog park will be driving there unless they live in the village. And so that raises questions about um, compounding the demand for parking. We don't yet have more parking to provide. Also, if you think about any traffic area like that, the, our noise house lawn will be significantly damaged. What landscape architects refer to as desire lines, which are those single file dirt paths across college campuses as shortcuts. That's just human nature. Um, people parking and then walking across the majority of the noise house to get to the back near the neighbor's fence are going to damage the lawn. Um, one of my concerns is that I think it's human nature to rally when you're invested in a cause such as a dog park and people are all hands on deck to make it happen and as is my understanding with the conversations around the defunct skate park, I mean there were parents in the community who were fully in support of making the skate park happen and then it just fell into disrepair and there had never been a long term plan put into place like who's going to repair this, who's going to maintain this, what happens 10 years down the road when sections need to be uh, repaired. And that, I'm, I'm afraid a similar situation would happen that people who are invested in the idea of a dog park will be all on board to make it happen and then will disappear and then we'll have a maintenance issue. Um, we do have landscaping issues and um, I was the one early days when I was told about this to bring up the fact that humans being humans who want to exercise their dogs but don't want to exercise themselves will in fact drive across our noise house lawn to get as close to the dog park gate as they physically can get. And um, the rebuttal to that was sort of, gosh, who would do that? Which, of course, we know everybody would do that. So then, you know, it was kind of on us at the museum to say, 
our, our lawn will be destroyed, people absolutely will violate, even if it's a rule you can't drive across the green grass to get to the gate of the dog park, they absolutely will do that. So unless we police the lawn 24 seven, we're gonna have a problem. And the dog park or organizers didn't really see it as a problem. That's obviously a huge problem. And that to me just raised, it's just one example of sort of, um, uh, what do they call that? Um, not but motivated reasoning. Like you want the dog park, you're motivated to get the dog park, so you're only going to see the rosy lens view. It's motivated reasoning. You don't see any of the bad part. Um, so the neighbor's voice is very valid because she does realize that there will be drawbacks. Um, so just well, so so anyway. So uh, the last point is that it was from the museum that the point that, that would happen, and then late in the game, Trisha said, "Yes, we would, you were right. We would have to put some sort of barricades." on either side of that Civil War era sycamore tree because people being people, they will drive on either side of that tree to get their cars to the gate. The so, thing, go ahead. I'm the other thing I thought about was in the wintertime, what in the world are they going to do? The town plows up the snow from the police station over into the uh, historical driveway and sometimes it's piled right up to high on that sycamore tree what are we going to do for the winter time? They won't be using it in the winter. Snow is piled up like so that. I only want it in the summertime. People but, use the dog park. <coughs> sure yeah, they will. I think there's a population of the dogs that, that aren't being represented here, so let me be the voice for them. I think we probably have some village residents whose dogs would probably take off if taken off leash, and I think that's the population we're looking to serve. I don't see us trying to enforce the oxbow dogs running freely out there. I, I, I think we're, we're asking way too much of Richard, the police, whoever it should be. But I think the fenced in area is an area that we're trying to develop for animals that otherwise would not obey their owners, but the owners would love to have them have some free running area. They, they don't have that, perhaps they live in an apartment, multi-story apartment, and they aren't, they aren't able to have them run free. So, I think uh, I'm, I'm leaning in agreeing that the, the museum is not an ideal spot, uh, in my opinion, for the dog park. But the area I'm thinking of, Trish, is when I come down to Wednesday Night Live, I park out by Barnum's building, and I come in on the path, which is behind RK Miles, between RK Miles and the river. The backside. Yeah, and as soon as I break out of that foliage area, there seems to be a corner right there that doesn't really see any uh, activity during Wednesday Night Live. I'm not sure if anything ever gets set up over that far. Yeah. I'm wondering if that might be an os a possible alternative for a fenced in area for folks to use. It's kind of away from all the rest of the area. If folks are still want their dogs run at large and they can contain them easily, that's fine. They still got to do it. Mm -hmm. But for those folks whose dogs won't stay with them when the leash comes off, that I'm just thinking if it's all in the same area, the dogs running. And then one area down there might be the better alternative. I'm just mm -hmm. suggesting that as a possible location. Is that town owned? The the corn well, as for where the Oxbow property line is, I don't know, up in that corner. But in that back corner up there, it, I don't see anything. I, I, my own dog off the top of my head is RK Miles owns the property. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm not sure I where the town know, line is. I don't have a our map. I <clears throat> Let me see if I can get one. I might be able to wave my hand. <coughs> Trisha, is the school on that little triangle where the free bike shed is? No. Next to the grade building? That's where we started to. That would be a great spot. We actually surveyed the neighbors, sent out letters to all the butters. That's where we started with this whole thing. So it's privately owned? We own town. Oh, yeah, tell well, we're not doing it there. Why not? Is there something? The, so what were the that's, concerns? That's a potential spot for the skate park to move to. Oh, OK. Because I don't think the skate park would be a good idea behind the noise. Nope. No. <clears throat> House. And the skate park in its, yeah, so. the skate so park in its current location was not advantageous to anybody. It eats up parking down yeah. at the Oxbow. So if there is going to be a concerted effort to rebuild the skate park, to find the right location for it was uh, the, the idea of it being where it's highly visible, with street lights to light it at night. Yeah. Um, the, that little corner, that little section up there by the bike shed seemed to be a more uh, a more welcoming location for the skate park. We still don't know if that's where it's going to go or not, but we'll try not to put the dog park there. Um, 
but I, I this this kind of shows where the um, RK miles property lines are. So this area back in here, mm -hmm. and I, which I think is what you talk about. This is you know um, Bourne's service garage, mm -hmm. and so the property line goes quite a ways back. Just so you understand, it's not. So I think even part of our community covers on right are actually on their property. Okay. <coughs> I, I don't I'm just I I would I would research what this corner of our property right down here if that's in the flood zone then it's obviously not going to work because the ice blocks come up there and destroy everything that's in there. But Judy, you think comments? Just listening. Does I, I I agree I agree with Mary and the rest of the people at the noise house. I haven't gone back to look at the property, but I think people would drive over the over the that property to get to the dog park and and walk paths through the property too to get there yeah well I kind of was questioning whether that one down with the school where the skate park used to be the skate ramp yeah. and but I'd rather have it there than I would the noise house because I do agree I that noise house is precious the way it is I think and to, to I mean if we put park in there I don't even think we should pave it it should be dirt park. Honestly, we don't play with chunk of land there. That, that Y is pretty good size. Yep. Maybe we need to go back to our drawing table. Maybe we can put a skateboard park and a thing there. You know, when we looked at it, we cut it about in half, Dan, when we looked at our first yep. set of plans. Maybe work, it could where? work for both. Um, the triangle? Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting to go back to the drawing board. This is why we're all here. Um, well, that's the idea of the discussion. I love the idea, and I wasn't at the next meeting when they talked about this house, but it was in the conversation. Um, it, you know, for many reasons, that it's by the kids' playground. You know, you take your kids out, you take your dogs out. You, you know, there's just a lot of great parts to it. Um, and I'm not saying that I didn't love the Noise House Museum area too. Don't don't get me wrong, but I do think yes, I hear their comments, and no problem going back to the door. How many people are interested in this dog park? Did they find out? It, how it's kind of like if you build it, they will come. There's a lot of people that would use a dog park. Sure. I've heard of a lot of people. Yeah, I believe that one of the yeah. populations that would serve are people who live in um, apartments in the village who don't have any green space, who would yeah. maybe take their dog, little dogs to a fencing area. I just want to say, uh, Brian, I really appreciate what you're saying, voicing you know, respect for the integrity of the noise house landscape and that means a lot to us at the museum um, and we're at the museum willing to work you know with the town on different initiatives this dog park um, proposal in particular uh, sort of on the fence about but primarily what it comes down to is I just feel terrible for the nearest landowner because I feel like oh that for me that doesn't seem fair <clears throat> well that certainly is. this dis discussion is really helpful you know I think uh, Going back to the drawing boards, good. Uh, I, I did want to uh, recognize Malia's work that she's doing. She's doing this as a project, and um, she's put a lot of time and effort into it. And um, you know, it'd be nice to find a solution that we can all live with. And and um, that's why a discussion here tonight is great because maybe we can look back at uh, the other location. Uh, but uh, I know she, uh, Malia's put a lot of time and effort into it. So. And, and it wouldn't be possible to do like B Street. And it would still there would be noise, but you wouldn't see the dogs. And the, they wouldn't, there wouldn't be the human traffic. The, if you fenced in just that wooded hillside along B, um, B and A Street, and let dogs run in there and put like a bench down at the lowlands on B Street, water light ohms, right? Yeah. Well, oh, and I think that's still tied up with their licensing for the dam right now, which has oh, been okay. appealed. So yeah. um, there's been a lot of discussion about different things that could happen down there. But that whole property is part of the dam, which is you know still under appeal to right now. I think to the Vermont Supreme Court. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. right. so none of that can really, not a lot can be done there. Right. You know, at this stage of time, <coughs> nobody knows when all that will really end. How how big, Malia, were you thinking of the dog park would be? <laughs> Ten feet by ten feet by forty feet. But this is for a topic a little long time still. Um, when we were talking about like when people don't like pick up after their dogs, 
we saw at like the Waterbury dog park that they had a really cool thing where there's like shovels all over like the fence, leaning on the fence, and then they had these holes in the ground with a metal thing on top. And if you saw like a piece of dog poop, you would put it in the hole and there's like a bunch of, and they called it like the compost things. And yeah. once they got filled up, they would empty it somewhere else. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think, I think, yeah, so I think that, I don't know what the official studies on dog parks are, but my sense of the one in Barrie that I visited is that the visitors, there's like a mutual policing that goes on. So whereas people who let their dogs poop on the neighbor's lawn on an evening yeah. walk, if they try that in a fenced-in dog park, they'll be called out by other users. Um, so I don't envision that there'll be poop on the ground as much as, you know, bucketed as it is in Barrie, and then in the hot July heat wave, there will be an odor that'll bother the neighbors unless Whoever was in charge of the cleanup. Whoever was in charge of it. Yeah, that's cool. That's what you said, though. People in the dog park, they police it. It's not like at our school where you were talking about, Andrea, where they just look at dog park. Right. But then there's got to be like strong oversight. Whoever is assigned to pick up the collected poop has to be held responsible. You know, if it's July and it's hot and the neighbor can smell it. And so if nobody's come for a week, it's going to be a problem, right? Well, it is really. Admitting the fact is that if the dogs bark, and how are you going to control the dogs bark? Right. Yeah. My dogs yeah. don't bark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is yeah. nice though. So it's, it's a nice thing to have a dog park in a town. I know that. Uh, my wife and I went to Plattsburgh. We we were over there with our puppy, mm -hmm. and uh, driving through Plattsburgh, and we saw this chain link dog park and. It was great for the puppy because you know he needed a place to get out and he could go and it was so organized there was nobody there to police it except for other users and there was like a sign with etiquette and it was like it was perfect it wasn't that big and you remember that and it was mm -hmm. like it worked great and people were respectful and you know that's one thing i remember about plattsburgh is how great their dog park was you know and it yeah, was a simple I think it thing, be a fantastic thing. I just, as i think we're all saying you need to find a spot where Right. It's not going to negatively impact the quality of life from, well, I'm not going to yeah. detract from the historical society. Right. And it's right. a nice piece of architecture. Right. And the dog park behind it does not, does nothing to, it's not in keeping with the 19th century feel of that building. Even if there's black fencing? No. <laughs> Cast iron. <coughs> well, it sounds like what I'm hearing is that it'd be good to go back to look at the options again, look at the past ones. Is that does that sound agreeable? Riley. Does it have to be in the village? Yes. Probably should be for those mm -hmm. by low income apartment dwellers who and, don't have right. Yeah. What we read about them, it really needs to be right. <coughs> okay. So this, this yeah. Five million there. houses for apartments, you ought to provide a space for <laughs> right. Well that's not a bad idea actually. So there are like four landlords in the village, they should their yeah. area. We'll let them take that back to, back to the drive board. Yep. <laughs> On the separate issue is a parking issue, and um, we have we've had several conversations about it. Um, not not necessarily. We've never talked about paving. I don't know where you got that, Mary, but we've never talked about That's paving true. a noise house driveway that I know of. And um, we have talked about utilizing some of the town-owned property on the outer edge that's connected directly with the road. Like uh, the part we looked at was on the road side of that hedge, the cedar hedge, there's an opportunity for six or eight places there easily that wouldn't detract from the Noise House Museum at all. You mean uh, you destroy that lovely new sidewalk that you built for? No, that, that was part of a federal earmark. Yeah, that's what that was part of the Okay, well that. Yeah, well. From, from going down there, and I've been down there about 10 times now, so I'm very familiar with that, that spot. And it was actually Jill, I think, that, that pointed it out as a possibility of a place that could yes. be parking. Yeah, and as I say, we're, we're very willing to work with the town. Yeah. And so Bob and I walked the perimeter of the lawn, and they already have a plan to do, is it six angled spots? I, I actually, I put it, I got two drops, and one up here, and I yeah. walked through it if you want me to. Yeah, go ahead, Dan. Yeah. Uh, so, and correct me if I'm wrong, discussion about parking on that end of the town. So, Peter Bourne is, is allowed us, there's this lot here, um, this is where the news and citizens really is now, 
and then there's lot here. Mark said that he will give us an email that the parking space is there. Right now, um, we can probably get one, two, three, four parking spaces there. Um, and that's where the drop off is, but he's going to let us fill it in. And then in front of the noise house, and this is actually still in the town right away, um, where we have um, parallel parking now, and we're going to change it to angle is parking. Is that just three places? I think there's two there now. Two. There's oh, two. Um, and once again, oh, this okay. is still in the town right away, and we can convert those two parking spaces that are there now into five parking spaces. Um, and then on down in front of the hedge, I think that you and Bob talked about the problem. I looked at it. Um, we actually made pull in, not angle, because while we didn't want the people, you know, angling out and going around down to the end of uh, West High Street, turning around. So they're straight pull in spaces. What does that mean? They're that means so they won't street. go down to the end of the street, right. you know. Ninety degrees are not at an angle, so people. Oh, right. Oh, I see. They're right and you could see the driveway. The yeah. people so the back, back out straight. Yeah, back out straight. And actually, so we can get another six spaces. In, and a little of the sidewalk, it would actually be a crosswalk behind those parking spaces. Um, we saved probably a good 50% of that hedge that we talked about. We don't love that hedge well, anyway, but it's fine. But I, we, I kind of want to keep it there because it does block light yep. in the ways and stuff like that. And it's a dividing and line, too, exactly. keep people off. Very much a dividing line. And yes. then we were going to put a guardrail on um, you know, West High Street there to prevent people Where it's from steep. Back and over. Okay. So, that's a little bit, so that's kind of, you know, from all the input that Bob and I have gathered, that's kind of the input for the parking. So in the downtown area, that's an additional four, nine, uh, 15 parking spaces. Um, and that should do it for the foreseeable future. And would you be doing this in one project or in steps? I would love like to get this done this year, also, depending on how much one project. Later. Okay. So is this the day to relieve daytime parking? Yes. Because I was going to say, I, as you all may know, I walk up and down that area enough to be very aware of when the parking spaces are being used and when they're not. Uh, and such as one of the ones in front of the Historical Society currently is being used by someone who's parking there all day and must be someone who lives or works right. in the immediate area. Right. This does not seem appropriate. Yeah. for uh, what should be a parking lot for people who are just there down there to eat or something. Patrons, yeah. Right. And also, while we're on that bit, I made this complaint before. With your, with your uh, angle parking, Trina, you need to be very careful when you get near a crosswalk because the crosswalk from in front of Bourne's over to the triangle there, if you're coming from the Bourne side, you have to go be a halfway out into the uh, right. road, walk, walkway, halfway out uh, to see beyond the car that is parked in the furthest, uh, furthest uh, space. And this is okay if you're someone like myself, you can peek out and see if anything's coming down. But if you're like my neighbors with small children, uh, this is not the place to be pushing your stroller yes. and having something coming the other thing is where you have the three parking spaces in front of the boards or the newspaper office, every day there's three big long pickups that park there. We're aware of that. And they park all day long. Yeah. And they come about quarter of seven in the morning. Yeah. And they stick out. And then in addition to that, they have sometimes they have, one of them has a big, uh, I don't know what you call it, a hook on the back. Yeah. So it sticks out even further. You don't always see that when you're coming down to yeah. around. One of, one of our efforts was to put a compact car sign out there. Yeah. Um, and we actually know one of the truck owners, well, I think two of them. And they are people that work right there. So. Yeah, they park all day. Yeah. And Peter Bourne also asked if we put, we put two hour parking, two hour max. Yeah, that's good. Um, and those spaces <coughs> right there. Cars would be fine. Compact yeah. cars and two hour parking only. In those spaces, but it you is know, it's, it's surprising. not something that you're really going to enforce so much. But sometimes, so if, when you pull in and you see that, and you know you're going to be there all day, you say, "Oh, let me just pull over here instead." Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, that's what we're looking for. Leave the truck in front of the compact car sign. A lot of times, <laughs> even <laughs> even in the evening, it's hard to find a parking spot there. Exactly. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's not easy. You go to go to dinner at El Toro, and there's no place to park. Like the Union Bank parking lot is full. 
across the street that's full from uh, the patrons for the pizza place and there's no place to park on there so it's not just during the day I, I, I watch it very carefully I go back and forth you know I'm, I'm really local and I look I've been really studying this for a couple months now and um, I see the use and a lot of it is just stop in the morning pick up coffee and donut or whatever but a lot of it is um, just a lot more cars in the area and we need more parking I think this was a resolution to um, you know instead of doing the angle parking because we know the safety concerns of that and uh, this this is a better alternative I think Richard probably agrees with that too Richard go ahead um, I'm back to the in front of the noise house yeah um, how many feet of the lawn do you think it's going to take for well I mean that's there's that tree actually that tree is there so it actually has a split down it, so it's just on our property line is just on the other side of that tree. Okay. Yeah. Well, how many feet is that from where we are now? I think it's like nine or something. I think like it was that. nine feet. Nineteen from the whole the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, we talked to Jill about moving the sign. You know, the sign in that clump of yeah. We have to move that back. Yeah. yeah. We would hope that you would that be part of um, what you would pay for. Yeah. Have that replanted for right. us. Yeah. When, we, when you drive down the street now, if there's two cars parked there. You can see the building mm -hmm. nicely. Okay. Um, I would hope that the new parking area is level with the street. And right. Not, not an incline where the cars can start to block out the mm -hmm. building. That's a good point. So That's a good you point. You make sure that that happens. That yeah. Good. Yeah, I agree. Go ahead, Joe. Okay, well, so, so the last point I'd like to make um, from this kind of joint discussion of the dog park and the uh, parking areas at the museum is that I, I appreciate, as I said, that people res respect and appreciate the architecture and the landscaping of the noise house. Going along with that, we do a lot for the community, as I'm sure you know. I'll just list a couple of things really quickly. We're three year years, three summers into what will probably be a six summer long project of professionally cataloging all of our collections. You may not know that if your grandma donated her rocking chair to the museum in 1962, until about two years ago, we didn't really know if we had it or not, which is not okay. So that's been a huge project. We're going to do a three-part Histria themed trivia night with Tom Moog, two nights at Moog's, one in July, one in August. The third finale, Tom Moog's gonna bring his liquor license to our tent on the lawn for a Saturday in early September. Um, and all the questions will be Morrisville history or Vermont history. Uh, we're currently taking the staff office and moving it to a smaller room off the kitchen so that what is currently the staff office, a big, it used to be apparently Copley's bedroom, um, will be available for rotating exhibit space. So we're doing a lot for the community. And as you've all said, we're really valuable to this community. And we're willing to work and compromise and come up with parking spots. And what we would like in return is a long-term lease on the building. And we should have pushed for this when we transferred ownership of the property from Water and Light to you folks at the town. And I'm not sure why we didn't. But it um, is scary to me to think that we have no recourse. We own our collections. But we basically wrapped that beautiful brick house in a bow and handed it to you as a gift. We do appreciate that we have money um, in the budget every year now to peck away at our very extensive to-do list, structural problems in a 200-year-old house. But we would like some sort of long-term 50, 75, 100 year even lease. It's my understanding that the Ski Museum has that from the town of Stowe. It's my great fear that somebody like, oh, I don't know, Starbucks is gonna come along and offer you the, enough money and you're gonna send us an eviction notice to get out of the noise house. Never. And we have no, um, yeah, we should have, and so because we have Dick on our board and he is the town lawyer and so it seems like a beautiful situation where the select board could work with Dick to come up with some sort of long-term lease to protect the noise house. I can tell you that I don't think that this is an issue. I can think of no quicker way to get lynched at my house than to try and sell off the, the heart of our community, which is the history of it. I think the Noise House Museum is there forever. I, I never mind getting voted off the board. I love working here on this board. I love this community. 
to, I watched my own home community sell its town hall. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, it still hurts to this day that they did that uh, because it needed upgrading. And rather than fight for the grant money to, to upgrade it, they sold it. And it, it, you sell in the heart of your community. The Noise House Museum holds the heart and history of our community. You, I, I don't see this being an issue. I don't think the Noise House Museum will ever be considered to be sold. It, it is more stone. But we, I feel the same way. I've got six generations here, like I said, and you know, my grandfather repointed those chimneys several times. You know, you know, we we hold it very highly and near and dear. Maybe all of us won't be on the board always, but uh, we certainly can protect it. We can we can write something up to protect it. Um, you know, we we did take over the liabilities of it that came with everything else, but we also want to covet that treasure. You know. Mm -hmm. And I'm even thinking maybe it'd be wise to have one of our, one of us on the board to be a liaison to the, the historical society, so we can have an ongoing, you know, back and forth. Todd is. Now, yeah. That would be Todd Thomas is. Yeah. yeah. So Todd, Todd is. Um, I know that he, I think he would like to become a regular trustee of the Noise yeah. Museum. In which case, absolutely, we'd love to have one of you. The select board um, would be good. Yep. Uh, yes, that would be great. And so. You and Dick perhaps can work together to come up with a long-term lease for the museum. Yeah. We can figure it Would out. That makes sense. We can talk about it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> we need uh, people like Mary and Dick to keep us in line anyway, so we're, we're used yes. to that. Okay. And Gloria. Mm -hmm. All right. Gloria. Great. Thank you. So will we all do it about the parking lot? Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. I personally okay. feel like that was a genius idea I had. It was. Because Bob was going to grab us behind the hedge. Yeah. And I, you know, once you Not pave, it, never right. pave. But no, once you gravel it, nobody's ever going to rake up the gravel. Right. It's just going to be a couple right. of years before somebody says, ah, oh, let's throw it out the paper. So this is a great compromise. I think yes. this works because it, we, what we want at the museum is to safeguard the integrity of the center of our green space. Yeah. So we're willing to cut away the edging for you, but we want that center of green right. space. I see Dick scowling a little bit back there, but uh, I think he'll be okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just, I'm just picking on you, Dick. <laughs> So. One thing, one thing too. I'm not sure, but a select board cannot hold somebody hostage over a certain number of years, right? I mean, we can't make a a ruling that some other select board down the road can. Yeah, you know. Right. So, I I think we I'd like to see us do something that would protect it. Right? Protect it, and Dick Dick can knows how to word that. Dick's stuff. creative. It he can figure it out. Yes. Yeah, that would be great. Yes. Yeah. Do we have any other comments about about uh, the dog park or the park? Just again, tell Malia that's a pretty cool project. Very cool. I, Very that's cool. why I wanted to recognize her for that. Yes. So, Go ahead, sir. Um, my name is Ryan Farrell. I actually live at the house at the end of West High Street. It's my daughter that kind of interrupted you guys meeting. I'm sorry about that. Um, she just introduced herself. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm just, I don't wish I had something better to offer. I know you already spent a lot of time planning space for parking, but I'm going to be really not happy to see all that green space go away and to see more traffic just kind of happening there. Uh, she already will go walk down to the end of the street. You know, I'll be there, but the day that, you know, she runs off and I'm not there, I'll be really nervous that people are pulling in and out of those spots and, I don't know, turning around with the wrong about the wrong time or something. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, once you pay that space, you never get it back. You never get green space back. And I've, I've lived in big cities my whole life. I see things change, but I almost never see things go from paved to unpaved. Yeah, thanks for the input. Well, at least it's far enough away from where you live. It's, you know, it's not like next door. Like me. Mm -hmm. I'm Mary. Come on. Mary's going to lose her sidewalk. Okay. And sometime right. I'd like a discussion about the the property at the school because yeah. I just don't fathom how come the taxpayers and more so don't have some say about the land at that school. Right. If that's Copley land in the beginning, right? It's a Copley gym that's up there that we put up there. Yes. Why don't why does the town we need to research it more? Because the neighbor wants me to right. find out anyway. Right. Okay. Yep. Okay, we're going to move on. <coughs> yes. Next, approve the bid for the sidewalk. Uh, this is the 
that we approve uh, Jim Bradley Incorporated to uh, build the sidewalk uh, on Congress Street, not to exceed $35,000. Okay. Budget-wise, we've got plenty of money in the budget. This will take care of this from a couple of years ago. Yep. that out, this year. Good. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, review and approve Capstone Field Internship Agreement. Hi, good evening. This is How you doing? So this is a uh, standard, uh, almost boilerplate type of agreement between Boston and Vermont Technical College uh, and uh, emergency medical service field internship sites throughout the state. Uh, which include uh, Bennington Rescue, uh, Rescue Inc. in Brattleboro, uh, Regional Ambulance in Rutland, uh, some of the uh, some of the fire services in the Burlington area, uh, who provide field internships for uh, students in the paramedic program at Vermont Technical College. Uh, we've had uh, we have one of our paramedics who has completed that program, Diana uh, G. Peter Fitz is currently in the program. Corey will be starting the program in August. Uh, this uh, formalizes an agreement between uh, Morris County and that's the greater town government uh, for those students uh, to do their field internships uh, with us as part of it. Uh, it's, uh, I hope you've had time to go through it. It indemnifies uh, the town. Uh, it, uh, the students are insured through the college. They completed FBI background checks through the college. Um, it's uh, again uh, the same issue that we've had since the beginning of the program. The right. steering committee for the VTC program for four years, and this is one of the things that we wanted. We don't uh, we don't want our students going out of state for clinical experience like other programs do. We want them to be we want to be able to offer them quality clinical experiences within our state. Keep them here as EMS providers, uh, and frankly. Once they uh, one, once they come to us, use it as a, almost as a recruitment tool to uh, let them see that uh, Morris County EMS is back and we're back hard and good. Uh, we're uh, we're a good place to be. This is very impressive. It is. Yeah. yeah. It's a great thing. And you said that other other towns, other cities are doing this too. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm very impressed. The only thing that there is there does have to be um, there will be some liability worked out between us. Right, understood. Yeah. There is a little bit of work to go with it, but we've yeah. already contacted the LC to, to try to get some guidance on that. Okay. <clears throat> Do I hear a motion or very now? I make a motion that um, I try not to say this, that we, we enter into an agreement with the Tech um, and the town EMS to provide um, it's a precepted field experience, a capstone field internship agreement. Yeah. Is that good enough? Yep, sounds good. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Uh, who are you authorizing to sign that? Dan. Is that in your motion? Yes. I have my second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Next, review and approve financial management questionnaire. So I have to fill this out every year. Yeah. For the honors. Yeah. State. I've seen it before. Yeah. Um, nothing's changed. Yeah. Last year. I have a couple questions. So, um, um, second question down: Do you reconcile bank and ledger balances monthly? No. And then our bank statements reconcile on a regular basis, yes. 
Are those two different things? They are. So I personally do not reconcile the bank. Um, okay. Um, so this is asking me, and then I think somebody else, I think Tina also fills this out at a different time, so our answers are going to be different. It, the point of this is making sure there's checks and balance within the town. Yeah. Um, so my aunt FO means finance office. Okay. Finance office um, reconciles the statements, and then they give them to me, and then I review them, and I sign off on them, but I'm not the one. That's right. right. That I don't do the reconciliation. I just review. All right, that makes sense. Fair work. And um, so someone else, keeps, who does the deposits and? I do the deposits. And who does, and the reconciliation is done by two different people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, do so I hear a motion regarding this? I move that we approve the financial management questionnaire. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion to pass. Next, update EMS roster to remove Amanda Peretta. Uh, she was a pre uh, member of the uh, volunteer staff uh, previously authorized by the board uh, that uh, we haven't uh, physically or heard from in several months. Okay. Uh, uh, even reaching out to her to tell that we were going to remove uh, So just request that we you know, go ahead and formalize that. Does she have any equipment? Uh, I'll check with Corey, but uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know the answer to that. I'll check with Corey and we'll recover whatever she has. Okay. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion to remove Amanda Peretta from the EMS roster. Second. Second. Uh, would, we, would we like to do the addition at the same time? Since we're uh, let's do one at a time. Yeah. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. And now Bill. Okay. Uh, Nicholas LeBeau is a uh, experienced advanced EMT, currently a uh, volunteer crew chief with Shelburne. He's accepted the position as a registered nurse at Copley Hospital and is moving into the Morris area. Uh, he's been by a couple of times to talk, uh, to talk with us about joining the squad. Um, his resume is that of a uh, uh, of a professional EMS provider, and uh, he's willing to help us with some uh, with some of our staffing issues on nights that he's available. Great. Uh, so uh, uh, I do have his, his resume and uh, CV here if you'd like to review it. But uh, I would uh, ask that we uh, bring him on as a volunteer member. Great. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion we accept Nicholas LeBeau on our EMS squad. Is that, do you want to say anything else? No, that's is that good. 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 Second. And a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Six. Review and approve bids for paving. We got three bids that came back in. Mm -hmm. um, all these companies are good companies. Um, we've worked with all of them before. They all are known for doing good quality work. So it's up to you guys. Make a motion that we approve the bid from J. Hutchins Incorporated at $193,066. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I was wondering about the different tonnage. Um, I looked at that too, and, and from what I have seen, Pike actually went a little bit thicker on parts of Randolph Road, and I think that's probably from some of their experience. Mm -hmm. you know, we could easily have Hutchins up there times and do a little bit thicker up there as well. So, um, the other thing I just want to point out in the past has been a lot of talk about how close I can work within the budget. Just so everybody knows, right now we have $278,000, and I think the swing and the prices will hopefully help people understand why I get a little bit concerned on right. what the price will actually come back in on because I have sure. no idea. So, you know, just if that comes up again, you know, we, we have one price that could all have been up around the 83 to 84 dollar a ton and we would have used our whole budget. Luckily we got one you know, that was a lower price this year we were able right. to do more. You can so pay more, yeah. We can pay more. Uh, or you know we will roll back into a uh, next year's money. We never spend paving money on anything else. Right. It's always cash for paving. What are they paving on Randolph? We're paving a mile from the Fitzgerald Road. So okay. down through that and there's a spot up by the uh, Andy Balcourt's yeah. Down the bump there. The yeah, they're, they're taking, they're paving that section. We're just doing a good size shim there, and then next, you know, 
you know, my plan is to keep working at Randolph Road year by year until I get to oh, Randolph. Yeah, is it nice. Fitzgerald a mile South or no. Fitzgerald a mile South. South? A mile South. Oh, okay. No. Are doing that at night too? No, they will not be okay. doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. No, no, that's okay. Yeah. All right. Um, any further discussion? So Jay Hutchins is the one doing the currently doing the streets yeah. here. Yeah. Phenomenal job, by the way. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So far. Next, old business. Do we have any old business? Next, approve warrants. Make a motion to approve the warrants. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passed. TA report. Just a couple things, just to kind of update on the paving project. They you know, finished the initial shim and you know, the initial lip overlay, and now they're going to be going back through and starting all the work on the structures. You know, make sure the sidewalks are, are going to be, that's going to go on for about the next month, depending on weather. And then, once again, the schedule after that is the first of August to come back in and do final asphalt and paint. So, um, the only things that I heard back from public is a couple of driveways that needed to be adjusted and some stuff like that. But other than that, the, the review has been pretty favorable. Um, you know, um, I think that they really are actually ahead of schedule for what they did at night and, and a little bit more. So, I, from what I know, and I haven't heard anything other than a few little comments like that. <coughs> when are they coming back to finish it off? Look like, you know, be the 1st of August to dish the all the structures reset and signs, guardrails, all that stuff done, and they'll come back and, and do the final coat of asphalt and painting. So, um, I haven't heard anything. You know, outside, unless you guys have. So, from what I've seen, perspective, everything's going well with that. I don't know if you guys have had any other feedback. No, just where the transitions are, where it's ground to where it meets the uh, really bad bumps, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're really not going to be able to do a lot about that until that final cut of asphalt. Just slow down. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. It's a lot smoother than it was before they yeah. started. Yeah, scarified, it's better than it's been in years. Yeah. So no work being done in July. No, they're, they're all the the manhole covers, all the you know shutoffs for the waters, um, every place where we have a ramp that meets you know sidewalk ramp that meets the the road. All the guardrails are going to be replaced. All the signs are going to be replaced. They're going to do the bump out um, over by the senior center and build that sidewalk and crosswalk there with the flashing sign lights that we have out front. So all that stuff will be going on in the month of July. So all that stuff will be wow. so. It's, it's not as noticeable, it's not as big an impact as the, the milling machine and the paving right. machine going through, but it'll be all those things that'll be going on. So there'll still be a lot of stuff that'll be going on. Will they do it day or night? The, the stuff in the downtown, just like before, will be done at night. Okay. And then the stuff on the outskirts of town and the residential areas will be done during the day. It'd so. be nice to get our new parking done at the same time. I, you know, I don't know that we can get that done because we're not going to be able to keep up with them. And, and Doug really, you know, we're trying to get the sidewalk prep so that we can do that. Yeah. And then Trish will park it, park it across the street. So, and then they're already calling sand for next winter. So I'm going to try to get that done before fall sets in so that okay. we can pave that and get that done. Okay. So, um, the other thing, 4th of July, um, you know, parade, and then after the parade, there won't be anything until 6 o'clock with the band and then fireworks after that. The chief and I met with the highway crew so that we've already got coordinated to block off the parking in the downtown for this year. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, that's good. Um, we're going to start early in the morning and get everything parked off and then keep a couple people kind of patrolling it to keep people moving and not parking there. So we'll see how that goes. Eric's the MC again up on the other end. So, yeah, so you know, we're all set for the 4th of July. Fireworks after that. For the most part, I think you have minimal services on Friday. I don't know. Are you guys still here? Um, we're here. Yeah, and then we're I'm, here. I'm going to be out Monday, Tuesday, next week, but I'm still in the area. So, mm -hmm. and other than that, you know, the summer project's moving along. So, that's all we've really got. Nice. Any questions for Dan? Bathroom on the expo? Any other? Uh, we finished up final design after all the changes today and submitted everything to the state for, for permits. Uh, Trish is planning on calling them tomorrow to push it along. So, um, but you know, we, we we changed the architectural design a little bit, so which means we had to redo the structural design a little bit. So we got that finished today and submitted. So. What's the estimated time of 
The spins them right now, you know, if we can get through the state, it won't take long to build. And Spurs and I are going to start writing the RFP tomorrow, but I don't want to put an RFP out then have the state come back and change and change or throw me off timeline. Then I've got a contractor that's ready to go to work and I don't have anything approved. So we're going to start pushing the state to get that done, which shouldn't be a big deal. It's pretty simple building to get through. So we're hoping that we can get through a little bit. Trish knows somebody down there. She tells me. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Next, select board concerns. Judy. I think the road, the road looks really great. I mean, it's really nice driving in the town. Yeah, and I like the fact that the um, you're kind of narrowing the the um, driving lanes, making the parking areas bigger, so maybe it'll slow people down in the downtown area. Great. Brian. I just wanted to say the same thing. I think it looks wonderful. I thought they did a wonderful job. Get in there quick and get it. I thought it went really fast. Yeah, it did. In fact, I suggested that they take that grinding machine around the state of Vermont because <laughs> just grinding it down made it smoother. <laughs> but it does look really nice, I think. It does. And the crosswalks. I like what you did there. Well, I didn't have anything to do with any of it. Oh, they did that? They did that. Well, that's, because yeah. it bothered me thinking, boy, if they're going to not do that, you know, there's no cross. But just putting them lines there to show people that they're there. Yeah, it's, it's all temporary, so yeah. I have anything to do with that as part of the plan. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. Okay. Eric. I had the ability to work with them, actually, through my work in the Sheriff's Department when the very first night, that Monday night that they were in town, and I can't speak highly enough to the professionalism. I've been around construction crews, been a part of construction crews. And I can tell you that throughout that evening, I never heard foul language. I never saw any behavior other than just on task, working. I was really impressed with Jay Hutchins, their crew, their, their supervisors, very easy to work with. And uh, really, uh, I, can't, I just can't say enough good about their work. It, it, I'm really, really pleased with everything, every aspect of it. Great. That, it's really good to hear it since we're hiring them for another piece, too. I like that feedback. Okay. Yeah. I had just a couple things. Uh, one was I thought it was strange how the, the stop bar for the intersection up here is way back now. It's back by the Chinese yeah. restaurant. Yeah. And you, it, people stop back there because they're supposed to. But then you've got to go ahead about 50 feet before you go whichever way. It, I've never seen it up that far. I don't know if you know that's Richard. Well, I don't know it's there, but but uh, that seems very odd. Yeah. And uh, but I think it, you know, they were getting stuff out, and not necessarily according to a plan. Right. Right. Well, it's not where it was. I know they're probably trying to accommodate where Congress Street comes in, but it's really way back. But anyway, um, the other thing I wanted to bring up about Corey that was a great presentation. And, and again, I appreciate you bringing, bringing this. The story was great. I used the same story on Facebook and she got almost a thousand likes on it. You know, it's incredible. And the comments were just overwhelming. Um, but I also have been in touch with the state and uh, Dave Iacovoni is planning on doing a special proclamation uh, on 4th of July and maybe working with you as the MC and um, doing it there when the Green Marshal comes through. And she's actually gonna be on vacation. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, they they want to they want to do something like that, you know. So we can talk about it. But that that was the tentative plan. Maybe we can we can change the time or something. But it, it's a it's a big deal to get a state proclamation. So uh, it may be possible to do it. Have the governor do it sometime. And we can, we've also submitted for the federal uh, for the federal award. Uh, and that uh, I've heard back from Trevor Trevor Whipple on that. Yeah, I know. And Trevor. that's that's essentially a two-year process. Right. So that's not going to work. But, uh, it's a very special were, thing. The ones that were just awarded a couple of months ago were actually from the 2016-2017 nomination period. Yeah. So it's about a two-year lead time. Yeah. But uh, we'll we'll keep it on the front burner. We're uh, we're advantageous that uh, the chairman of that committee is a Vermonter. Right. And uh, Trevor's pretty excited about. That. Get the nomination mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a very special thing. I it touches me because I've been involved in that. You know, I was on rescue for 35 years, and I actually had a similar situation in Elmore where there was a head-on and a young boy was trapped in the car, and um, the car was catching on fire. Same thing. He was unfortunately he deceased inside the car. You know, I was in the car with him, and it caught on fire, and I had to get out. But that was years ago. I totally feel for that situation and. 
and you don't have to stay. You know, you just something beyond what what your duty is makes you do it. So it's a pretty cool thing, and uh, I, she's very very humble and doesn't uh, ever you know pat herself on the back, but she should be. So, anyways. The last thing I want to mention was Malia in the dog park. She did so much work for this, and you know, I kind of saw her eyes kind of sink a little bit because uh, she put a lot of time and effort into trying to get the dog park together. And I think the dog park is excellent, and I think it was a good conversation here tonight to, to try to come up with something. And I wanted to thank her when she was still here, you know, because this is a big deal. You know, she's young and she's seeing how everything works, and and um, what she's trying to do is a great thing for the town. So. I think, I, she wanted, I think she was nervous about talking, yeah. but she's been working with um, Trish. Copley's not going to do the 5K this year that they've been doing for years at um, Rocktoberfest. So Malia is taking over the whole 5K that's awesome. to, to raise money for Dog Park. That's, oh, that's she great. She sent out sponsor letters. To that's great. Exciting. Okay. Yeah, boy, oh, good for her. Wow. We'll tell her we said thank you. All right, and that's all I have. Uh, other business, is there any other business tonight? I move we enter executive session to discuss appointment or employment or evaluation of public officer or employee to the body will clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage pursuant to Title I DSA Section 313, Subsection 4 of the Vermont Statutes to include Dan Lemley. <laughs> Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So far. A motion that we authorize Dan Lindley, the town administrator, to offer the position of permanent full time highway laborer to Michael Buchanan at step nine at a rate of $16.78 per hour. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? That is step nine of the laborer scale. That's correct. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Further, I move that we authorize Dan Lindley, town administrator, to offer the position of permanent full-time highway foreman to Kevin Barrows at step 12 at a rate of $24.12 per hour. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? And again, that is on the foreman scale. Correct. Step 12. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. I move that we adjourn. I second that. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed.